they're just murder mysteries with between zero to one suspects. And there's more twists in them than a Chubby Checker concert. Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. This is another one in my Challenging My Assumptions About Genre Fiction series. And today, it's thrillers. I sort of already soft like thrillers, so I thought that this would be a massive success. This was this was the easy one. I've read plenty of thrillers in the past. I like them. I really enjoyed The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I think Daphne du Maurier is brilliant. I like the works of Ian Banks for the thriller content. But I've not read a thriller in a little while, so let's go through and check them. Let's meet our three books. We've got The Little Drummer Girl by John Le Carre. We've got Gone Girl by Gillian Fling. And we've got Verity by Colleen Hoover. And let's start with The Little Drummer Girl. This was meant to be a buddy read with Ange's book chatter. And Ange didn't even get started the book when I sent her a message to say, sorry, I'm DNFing it. One of the worst things that I think an author can do is tell you what's going on and not show you what's going on. I don't need you to interpret the world for me. I need you to describe it. So it was, it was a really simple DNF that this was just something that I was not going to get into. This was some sort of spy thriller, something to do with Israel. That's really all I can tell you, that a bomb went off. Just like the most clear-cut DNF that I have had in a long time. Uh, terrible. I regularly make videos where I read my favourite booktuber's favourite books. But usually I really like them. Gone Girl is Simon from formerly Booktube with Simons. And if you don't know Booktube with Simon, that's probably because that's probably because it became Booktube with Simon and Amy and then Booktube with Amy as Simon left. Nonetheless, when I reviewed this on Goodreads after finishing it, this is what Simon wrote, which probably shows you what I thought of this novel. Flynn has taken notes. She has decided to show me what's going on and to tell me as well. Her characters are so unlikable. And this is the intention of the book. It's very hard to criticise Nick and Amy for being unlikable when that was the intent, but I didn't have anybody to root for. There was no what's going to happen. I didn't really care what happened by the end of this novel. I, I kind of thought that it would be cool if both Dick and Fanny died at the end of it. Not just the two of them, but the sister, the cops, just everybody. Just somebody drop a bomb. That would have been, that would, that would have been a good ending. This relies on good character creation. It It is a plot-driven novel, but it has to have good characters. There is so many twists in this, this book, so many twists, that the characters have to be more three-dimensional than they were. Because th they weren't. They were stereotypes. They were cutouts. They were bad people. And that was the end of it. There was not a lot in the character development. And this book fails because... Julian Flynn cannot write characters. The about the 95% mark, I realised that I was just reading this to finish it. So I've DNF'd it. I don't know how it finishes. And I don't care. An average rating of 4.43. Verity is quite a popular novel on certain websites. This tells the story of a woman who meets a man whose wife is an author. A famous author. And they get along. And this lady, Lowen is also an author. Turns out that Verity is ill and she requires somebody to write the rest of her novels in the series that she's already signed on for. This is a great chance for Lowen to make a butt ton of money, which of course she needs because she's a struggling author and authors are basically poor until they're very, very rich. Lowen is requested to go to the house where Jeremy and Verity live to go through all of Verity's notes because Verity is unable to hand over any of the work. It turns out that Verity was in a car accident and in a bit of a vegetative state. Lowen finds Verity's diary and it's a bit fucked up. And this creates some sort of tension in this. We not just have these three characters who we don't really trust any of them. Is Verity in a vegetative state? Is Jeremy a good guy or did he fuck his wife up somehow? And what the hell is Lowen still doing there? Does she have a crush on Jeremy and will they have sex? But we also have the child. Now, it turns out that Jeremy and Verity had three children, but two of them are already dead, which is where the fucked up shit begins. This is very much in the style of Daphne de Maria. It does remind me of Rebecca quite a bit. It, it is this psychological slow thriller. The danger is like 
ever present, but it's never presented. It's just not very well done. The problem with this book is that it's too well done for me to say that it's poor and too poorly done for me to say that it was good. I couldn't buy in to the narrative and the story that was in Verity's diary. It just wasn't believable enough. As a result, the ending of it was not believable either. It didn't take me to the dark places it promised to take me. It's like if a book has one of the characters say, I was sexually assaulted and that's why I'm depressed. The book is not about being sexually assaulted if that is all the content. It's wafting over the little bits that you need. It's it's adding a flavour to it and relying on your head to do it all. But it's not giving you the character's emotions. It's not immersing you in what's going on. And while this book isn't a complete train wreck, it's not particularly good. And I only gave it three stars, and I think that that was kind of generous. I said at the start of this that I kind of like thrillers, and I had three really bad reads, I I would say. This was a bit of a failure. So in order to try and find something positive that I had out of this experience, I decided to read two more thrillers. Let's let's try and pick a little bit more niche. And I thought that I, I really did love the Millennium series, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and the two sequels to that. So I thought I would add some Nordic Noir to my list, see if I could find something good. And I added The Darkness by Ragnar Johansson, and I added The Girl in the Spider's Web by David Landenkrantz. Now, that is the fourth book in the Millennium series, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which I have previously said that I loved. But Stig Larsson, the author of that series, has passed away, and this is a new author. Darkness deals with Detective Hilda, who is been asked to retire. The police agency have got a new young detective in to replace her, and she's told that she can leave immediately. When she says that she likes her job and she doesn't want to leave, they say, well, you can take on one of the cold cases to work out until your 65th birthday and you can retire. Hilda then takes on uh, the role of investigating what happened to a Russian immigrant prostitute. While she was being processed, she disappeared. This was a deeply political novel dealing with asylum seekers and prostitution and mistreatment of women. It was very feminist. The women that were being mistreated were not just the prostitutes, but also Hilda herself, who was the victim of sexism in the workplace. Uh, and, and there's clearly some form of corruption going on. And so you're wondering whether this is a cover-up or whether this is just a case of people being lazy and incompetent and not wanting to be found out. I thought that this then sort of meandered on through the thriller things. You sort of met your suspects and then the book sort of starts to come to its crescendo and the way it ended really did surprise me. I did not see the ending coming. I will be reading the next book in this series at some point, but overall this was maybe a a three-star read as well. It was better than Verity. Significantly better if the author was just that little bit better. If if the writing was just that bit better and I could be immersed in the characters. If there's a very fine line when you are talking about political issues between putting in enough information so that I can understand the issues and so that I can form my opinions and so that we can have that political discussion. Yeah, you have to put a certain amount in and then you have to not put too much in. And I thought that this was slightly on the too much side, which which slowed down what was actually quite a short novel. As a girl in the spider's web. It is dangerous to read a series and to expect a new author to take over from the previous author and to have it work. And This is a perfect example of it not working. This repeated storylines in the first three books. It is harder as the the series has progressed to come up with ways to bring characters back together and to rip them apart, which is what happens to Elizabeth and Mikhail throughout these books. But it it just really felt like a big rip-off. And I felt like Landon Krantz didn't have the subtleties that Larson had. The between Mikhail and Elizabeth 
it's a relationship that shouldn't happen in in the first three books, and it's not alluded to. And Larson is able to create that sort of, oh, are they going to get together feeling about it, even though you sort of know that they shouldn't get together. He's able to create that sexual tension, where with Landon Kranz can't, and to do it, he flat out talks about it. So it's another case of showing, not telling. I... I wanted to DNF this book before I even got to see Elizabeth. And if you have read the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series, you know that she is the star of it, that Elizabeth is what you read this series for. I did hang on until she appears, but ultimately I was just so much more excited by the other books I was reading. And this was poor writing and it's the third DNF out of five. So I said at the start of that I enjoyed thrillers and maybe I just don't, but I have to say that I did not come across an author of these five authors that I can say was a talented writer. I don't know if there's something about Thriller that allows a substandard writer to produce a book that can sell, but that's what's happened. I didn't get any tension in any of these books. I think of books like The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson and how that creates tension and gets you inside these characters' head. And that was completely lacking from this. Think about Rebecca by Daphne Namarie, and that's all gone. The terror that, that our narrator feels in Rebecca, it's not evident in these novels. And how am I meant to enjoy a suspenseful ride if you, as an author, cannot communicate the terror? that your characters are feeling, that's that's poor writing, it's poor character development. Good thrillers need good character writing, and these five novels fail in that astronomically. I don't know if thriller readers are just better able to immerse themselves in a world without the assistance of the author, but I couldn't do this. So let me know in the comments, did I pick the wrong books for me? Because I, I really do want good characters in my books regardless. Or am I just a stinky curmudgeon that doesn't like thrillers and have just shat on a little genre? The last time I did one of these videos, I got a lot of requests to other genres. So let me know if there's a genre you would like me to cover. Uh, hopefully it's more successful than thriller. Maybe I'll give thriller another shot with uh, some better recommendations. <laughs> Must be good characters. Must be good characters. My god, these were terrible characters. Bye.